Hi everyone! So today we're going to be working on quartiles and interquartile range as our lesson. So we're going to still be working on measures of variation. Okay? So our goal is going to be to find the measures of variation by finding the quartiles and interquartile range. Okay? So, but before we start, I usually have some questions for you. What if math does not exist how would a structure look like i need to draw a picture I'll give you a minute so here are some of your answers without math we don't be able to measure the length of buildings we might accidentally make one side smaller than the other that is very true all right let's look at the next one so one of you said this way it will tip down like what i'm doing with uh in any minute so it says it's supposed to be like this the perfect castle kind of thing but then without math we don't know how to measure like symmetry or equally so we might able to draw or like shape the building in a way that it's not stable that's a nice idea some of you just draw a circle with that in the middle. It could be just like that without a roof or just a circular circular home. It's not structured very carefully. But it could be nice too, huh? This one didn't draw anything, but it says structures would fall down daily. I totally agree with you. This looks like crazy for me, but it might look like this. Like this could be the staircase is going out. Uh, the door like that, it's not really structured. Maybe this is like the floor plan. Let's just go in and we're not able to like really make a perfect um, dimensions for our houses or building. I also have thinking of this kind of house. Like it's like upside down house. It's a house but it's rooted on the tip instead of the base. So there are a lot of um, uh, problems that we might encounter if there is no math that exists in real life okay so our lesson will start with what is a quartile so today we'll be going to be discussing quartile and interquartile right so a quartile measures the spread of the values above and below the mean by dividing distribution into groups so a quartile uh, divides the data into three points the lower quartile the median and the upper quartile Actually, it's divided into 25 sections, 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%. And that will be our, um, the forms of the data set. So let's see an example for us to understand what I'm trying to tell you, okay? So let's say we have this example. I had to keep moving myself <laughs> out of the screen because I'm like covering my my board. So let's say we have this example right here, uh, a set that is 2, 3, 4, 9, 10, 11, 13, and 15. And we're looking for the lower quartile, median, and the upper quartile of this given set of data. So the first thing we have to do is to find the median, the middle number. So let me get my pen. So we'll find the middle number first. So in this case, we have 2, 3, 4, 9, 11, 13, and 15. There are seven numbers in a set. So we are e it's easier to find the middle. So the middle number or the median will be 9. So in that case, um, like 9 will be our median. Okay? That will be our median. Oh, my handwriting is so horrible. So 9 with that. Or that could be our Q2. Okay, let me change the pen. I thought I did change. And then if you look at your lower set of numbers, I don't know why is my pen is not changing colors when even though I changed them. So we my So here in the lower set it has three as the middle number of the lower set. And on the upper set or the upper quartile, there is 13 as our um our upper quartile or the median in the upper set so with that said like it's not allowing me to change my pen so the lower quartile will be three our median is nine and our upper quartile is 13. so those are the numbers that represent um the set of data when are we going to use this? So later on, we're going to be interpreting a data uh, 
with the lower quartile, median, and upper quartile, it tells us the, how many percent uh, of our data is in the 50% up or 75% up. Now, how many, uh, how many percent are in the lower bottom? Later on, you will see for our next um, lesson. Okay. Let's look at problem set B. We're looking for lower quartile, median, and, and upper quartile again. So the first step we should do, oh, by the way, the first step you should do with your data, it must be arranged from lowest to the highest. I forgot to tell you that. So in this set, it was already arranged lowest to the highest. So this is the first thing you should do. Arrange your data lowest to the highest. So it is 5, 7, 10, 12, 12, 13, and 15. It's already arranged. So let's see where is our median. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Usually you could just uh, cancel it out like that. Cancel it in both ends and both ends. And you could cancel that and you could cancel that. And with that said, I have 12 as my Q2. All right, but you don't have to do that. If you could just do it uh, mentally without like doing canceling in both ends so your your uh, numbers are clear, you could also do that. But if, if it helps to cancel out both ends, go ahead. So here, we're gonna look for the median of the upper quartile and median of the lower quartile. It just happened that our median here is in a perfect spot, 13, and here another side is 7. So now, 7 is our lower quartile, uh, the median will be 12, and the Q3 or the upper quartile will be 13. So that is just looking for the quartiles, okay? There you go. So the next thing we're going to be um, looking for is the interquartile range, or we usually call it IQR. So again, the IQR describes the middle of 50% of values when ordered from lowest to the highest, as I said before. So to find the interquartile range, or IQR, first find the median, they already practiced that, and the lower quartile and the upper quartile. And then we're going to find the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile, or Q3 and Q1. We take the difference for that. We have a little formula on the, on the side here. It says uh, Q3 minus Q1. So upper quartile minus the lower quartile. All right, here we go. So problem set 2A for finding the IQR. So the first step, we check if our set of numbers are in order from lowest to the greatest. So let's see, 12, 16, 20, 22, 35, 14, 43. It looks like it's in order. We're gonna find first what is our Q2, Q3, and Q1. So let's find, let's find our Q1, Q2, because those are the things that we need in order for us to find the IQR or the interquartile range. All right. So let's find our numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This just happened that uh, we have an even number. So it means that our median will be in the middle of two set of numbers. So one, two, three, four, and it's going to be here. So our median will be in between 22 and 30. So how do we do this? We're gonna we're gonna add 22 and 30, and then we divide it by two. So we're gonna divide 22 and 30. These are like in between them. If you could spot right away what it's in the middle, go ahead. But if not, you could always add uh, the two numbers and then divide it by two because you're looking for half of it. So 22 plus 30 divided by two. That's what we got. So 22 plus 30 divided by two will be so we'll be divide 52 divided by 2, and that gives us 26. So 26 now is our Q2. Actually, the median, we don't really need it to find IQR. What we need is the lower quartile and the upper quartile. So in this case, we have the upper quartile, we have it between 45, I mean 35 and 40. And our lower quartile will be in between 16 and 20. Let's solve for it. So in this case, we're going to have 35 plus 40. That will give us 75, right? 75. And then we divide it by 2. 
and then that will be what 75 divided by 2 use your magical tool with calculator 35 divide a uh, plus 40 it seems that I don't know to add over and then divide it by 2 and that gives you 37 okay 37.5 don't tell them I use calculator all right so 37 point Let's do that on the other side because we needed the lower quartile to find the IQR. So in this case, we have 16 plus 20. I think that's 36. All right, so I have 36 divided by 2. And we know that's 18. Right? So now we have our Q1 is 18. And our IQR is 37.5. And how do we find now our IQR? You know the IQR is highest minus the lowest number. So we'll do that. All right, so we know that the IQR, the IQR is um, Q3 minus Q1, right? So that's the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. And with that said, we got 37.5, all right, uh, minus 18. So now we have 37.5, which is our Q3, minus 18, which is our Q1. And um, that will become, that will be equals 37, so 37 minus 18 with your magic cultural again. That's going to give you 19.5. Oopsies, where did I put that? Let me put that down a little bit. 19.5. Alright, so with that, that will be your final answer. Okay, so the IQR will be 19.5. We have so much work for this. It just happened that all our medians are in between two, but you could always use your calculator to simplify the work. Alright? All right, let's look at one last example, and this example I think is easier. So 5, 7, 10, 12, 12, 13, and 15, they are in order. So we're going to find the Q, 1, 2, and 3, and then the IQR. So let's look at our median first. So that's the first thing you should do. First, uh, make sure it's in order. And the second one, find your median. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. So I know that it's going to be 12. So 12 will be our Q2, all right? Then we find the, the median again here, and it's obviously it's 13. And then the median on the lower quartile is seven. So once our numbers are odd, it's easier to find um, those medians because it's just gonna be in the middle of the middle. You're not gonna um, add a lot of numbers. So this is gonna be seven. It's going to be 12, and they're going to be 13. Our RQR will be highest. I mean, um, our IQR will be um, uh, upper quartile minus the lower quartile, which is 13 minus 7. And here, it's going to be 6. Easy, right? So later on, we're going to be needing this information for us to create a box and whiskers flat. And that box and whiskers plot will represent um, a data in um, collection of data and represents as percentage of a certain problem set. All right. So if you have some questions, ask me later. We will practice more of this kind of problem uh, using Excel. And um, let's let me know if you need. Help. All right. So go to your uh, Google Classroom and your homework will be the um, IXL in Algebra 1. Uh, you have to do KK3 quartiles and interquartile rings and I'm going to be with you working with that. And if you really have any questions, I'll work with you one-on-one -on -one while you work in IXL. All right. Good job. See you next time, guys, for our next lesson. And have a good day. Stay safe. Bye for now.